Hi and welcome back to Scotty's Tech.info. I'm Scotty with my co-host Cletus the Tribble. And you've probably heard in the news a lot lately, uh, everybody's talking about Wi-Fi 6, specifically Wi-Fi 6E. And the big news here is that uh, not only are we going to have a new flavor of Wi-Fi, but it's going to be uh, 6 gigahertz, the 6 gigahertz band. And the 6E flavor specifically supports all of the uh, new features and the super fast speeds up to 11 gigabits per second via Wi-Fi. Now you should probably, if you haven't watched it already, I made another earlier video and it's called Is Wi-Fi 6 Really That Much Better? which you can watch right here. And in that video I explain uh, the differences between gigabit ethernet and Wi-Fi and why Wi-Fi, even including Wi-Fi 6, is actually always slower than these wonderful speeds that they claim. Now, Wi-Fi 6E is going to use the 6 gigahertz band, which is between 5.9 and 7.1 gigahertz. So another thing to remember here is uh, everyone's kind of talking like, yeah, but the 6 gigahertz band in the spectrum, it's, it's underutilized right now. But first of all, you have to remember that in, in many countries, 6 gigahertz is actually going to be used for 5G as well. And in those countries where it's not, it's kind of like uh, usually an unlicensed band. Now, keep in mind here that unlicensed band means that uh, there aren't really very strong regulations or any regulations, which means everyone and their grandmother is going to jump on that band and start using it. Uh, so for right now, Wi-Fi 6E is going to be great because no one's using that portion of the radio spectrum. But remember 2.4 gigahertz. 2.4 gigahertz is kind of also this unlicensed band in many places. And uh, Wi-Fi is, of course, Wi-Fi AC, for example, uses the 2.4 gigahertz band. But so do things like Bluetooth and decked cordless phones and a whole variety of other things. So initially, sure, Wi-Fi 6E is going to be great because that 6 gigahertz band isn't going to be cluttered. But as with the 2.4 gigahertz band, as time goes on, everyone is going to have Wi-Fi 6E. Um, there are going to be other systems and services probably operating in that band, and it's going to become cluttered uh, relatively rapidly. But you might be thinking that, well, but Wi-Fi 6E up to 11 gigabits per second isn't that better. Uh, with Wi-Fi AC, for example, you might buy a Wi-Fi router and it'll say, oh, it does up to 1.3 gigabits per second. Practically speaking, you're going to get maybe 100 to 200 megabits per second, uh, which is only 15% of the maximum advertised speed. So if we apply the same general rule to Wi-Fi 6E, uh, instead of 11 gigabits per second, you might actually get 1 to 2 gigab gigabits per second. Now, you'll, you're probably going to think like, right, but faster than 1 gigabit per second, that's faster than my Ethernet network, because I have Category 6 cable running everywhere, I have some inexpensive um, uh, gigabit Ethernet switches, I wired my house just like you told me to, Scotty, and now my Ethernet network's going to be slower than Wi-Fi. What gives? Well, never fear, because 2.5 gigabit per second Ethernet is now here. Uh, Intel has released uh, a, a little Ethernet controller chip uh, not so long ago. It's called the i225-V or -LE or something. Anyway, it's the i225. It's a little Ethernet controller chip, and it's already made its way into high-end motherboards, uh, and also um, it's already available in certain uh, gaming laptops, for example. And initially, of course, this 2.5 gigabit flavor of Ethernet, it's only going to be available in the higher-end machines, but the whole reason that Intel came out with the i225 is they're basically trying to, to sort of standardize and popularize 2.5 gigabit per second Ethernet, and this is how they're going to do it. So it may take another year or two, but uh, as time goes on, pretty much every new laptop you buy or every new computer you buy uh, with Ethernet is going to have 2.5 gigabit per second Ethernet. Also, if you have a desktop computer, you'll be able to buy uh, an add-in PCI Express card uh, that gives you 2.5 gigabit per second speeds. Now, um, not only will you need a new motherboard or new computer or whatever, you're also going to need to replace all of your Ethernet switches. Um, that's not as bad as it seems. At the moment, the uh, only switches and routers that support 2.5 gigabit per second Ethernet are, of course, the very expensive high-end models. Uh, that will change over the course of the next year, and eventually you'll be able to buy just like an inexpensive D-Link 2.5 giggy Ethernet switch. And the good news is that if you've already wired your house with Category 5E, Category 6, or Category 7 Ethernet cable, 
uh, all you have to do is replace the switches. So say you get a new computer or you get a, a 2.5 gig card for your desktop computer. Uh, you have even just Cat5e cable running everywhere in your house. You're totally fine. You just replace every single Ethernet switch with an inexpensive consumer model and boom, you just upgraded your one gigabit per second network, wired network, to two and a half gigabits per second. So that's pretty cool. Now, yeah, you're gonna have to replace stuff, but keep in mind that in terms of Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 6E, you also have to replace everything. You need a new Wi-Fi router. Um, you'll also need to get a new, the little card you put in your laptop or whatever kind of uh, Wi-Fi add-in card you have in your desktop. You're gonna have to replace that as well if you want Wi-Fi 6E speeds. So either way, you're going to have to sort of upgrade your whole network. The benefit with 2.5 gigabit per second Ethernet, of course, is that when it says 2.5 gigabits per second, you're actually going to get 2.5 gigabits per second. Several people have said uh, on my earlier videos, oh yeah, but it's not good because the more switches you have, the higher the latency. And, you know, if you have switches spread out throughout your house and you have one link, say, going from upstairs to downstairs, that one link is limited to the, the speed of, of the cable, one gigabit, or in the future, two and a half gigabits per second. And that's true, uh, but that's still substantially better than Wi-Fi because with Wi-Fi, you're only getting, you know, maybe 15 to 20% of the maximum stated speed. And with ethernet, uh, obviously, you know, even if you're all using the internet at the same time, with two and a half gigabits per second, unless you have like some kind of mega fast fiber connection, uh, you're never going to saturate your two and a half gigabit per second uh, Ethernet connection between, say, upstairs and downstairs. Um, also, latency. Uh, with Wi-Fi 6, the latency is supposed to be 75% lower, especially for you gamers out there. 2.5 gigabit per second Ethernet is faster, and it still has the same incredibly low latency. So yes, even if you have multiple switches wired together when you wired your house with Ethernet, uh, the latency is still going to be way, way slower than even Wi-Fi 6E. Uh, no, the latency is going to be far lower, not slower, lower latency, <laughs> i.e. faster than Wi-Fi 6. And finally, don't worry, because as Wi-Fi progresses, of course, Ethernet is also progressing, eventually there are plans to come out with 5 gigabit per second Ethernet, and uh, for that, Category 5E cable will not do, you will actually need Category 6 or higher cable. So that's why I recommend using Cat 6 or even just Cat 7 cable right now if you're wiring your house. You'll be future-proof future, future proof and Bob's your uncle. Wi-Fi 6E may sound great, but again, you're not really going to get the super fast speeds. Mm -hmm. The latency is, is lower, yes, but it's nowhere near as low as Ethernet. And now with 2.5 gigi, uh, it's, it's a no-brainer. Go wired. For more techie tips, see scottystech.info. Thanks for watching. See you next time.